others who couldn't join today would have the chance to see Cornell's program or, or some who are here might wanna watch it again. So I'm really happy to welcome Cornell Coley. And Cornell, maybe you can um, start off by just talking a little bit about yourself, your background, what brought you to this, and I'll just let you take it from here. Okay, thanks, Beth. And please let me know if I'm ever uh, distorting or not loud enough, that type of thing. Right, okay. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks. Well, uh, welcome everyone. How are you today? Yeah, they say, Ohota um, Zane in Ghana, like, how are you? And the answer would be, Boko. I'm just fine. Ohota Zane. Oh, okay. Boko, Boko, is that right? Boko. Boko. Yeah, that's good. So we are um, about to embark upon a little journey. And my journey was this. Um, let's see. I wanted to play drums to get out of a boring math class when I was nine. <laughs> I started taking lessons in the basement of my elementary school in Roxbury with um, Mr. Dickey, my drum teacher. And I kept playing those drums the rest of my life. I went to private lessons uh, for a while at Willington Conservatory, and then I bailed out. And uh, I've just been self-educated on the drums for the drum set. I uh, take lessons here and there. And then in college, I got um, a chance to go to Ghana, West Africa, for my junior year. And they had a national dance troupe at the university in Accra. Uh, Kwame Nkrumah had uh, started the uh, independence movement. There was a lot of African countries liberating themselves from the colonial, colonial uh, powers then. And they had a national dance troupe that offered lessons. And I was there most of the time. I skipped a lot of classes, you know. But I did take the finals at the end. I, I crammed for three days straight and passed everything. But I love the University of Ghana because it reminded me of where I was born in Jamaica. And they had a botanical gardens at the university that was just like the one that my family lived at the edge of because my father worked for the vet. And now it makes sense because Jamaica was colonized by the British and Ghana was too. So they probably built the botanical gardens with the same architecture because it looks so much the same. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> so um, I launched me upon the drum, moving from the drum set to hand drums because I started African dancing and it was Ghanaian style. And uh, after college, I moved to California. I joined another dance troupe because I met, joined one in Boston too. And uh, I started doing African Ghanaian dance and then I did Brazilian dance when a choreographer came to uh, our city. I was in Berkeley, California. And then I went to LA to go to grad school in dance as a cultural anthropology in dance. And I, along the way, studied Afro-Cuban dance. But because um, of the politics of the time, see, Reagan was the president, I couldn't get any money to study anything Cuban because Cuba was a communist country and they were the enemy, which I really loved because my mom was born in Cuba. She didn't leave till she was 16. Uh, Jamaican families often migrate around, so her father traveled and that's where he wanted to settle. And uh, I got money to go to Brazil. So I went to Brazil actually several times and um, studied um, Portuguese at the university in California before I went. And, you know, in high school, I went to Boston Latin here in Boston. And I was have to study Latin for six years. But did it help me when I was studying Spanish to go to Cuba? No, I got a D. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it did seem like it helped, you know, when I studied Portuguese, because, you know, the roots are the same and all that. So, you know, I, I um, speak Portuguese, but not Spanish. And I have deep ties to Brazil and then Cuba because I love it and I did as much as I could and Afghana, West Africa. And um, after having a career in arts and management and keeping that move, the music and dance on the side, I moved it to the front of my life about 15 years ago and I started doing just that. And that brings me to today. I try and bring everything from the past with me that's useful 
and to make uh, it work for you know a life as a teaching artist. That's what I call myself. So I work with a lot of seniors and a lot of youth and uh, with musicians as well. And uh, I'm excited to be here. We're delighted to have you and it's wonderful to hear your story and um, just how many different threads came together in your own life and your own studies, which seems to just you know, give rise to the theme you're sharing today, how there are roots, but then there's so much that comes from those common roots. Oh, yeah, I'm sure great. people have interesting stories when you ask them. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. And, you know, we don't have any of the students with us today. Usually we have several um, Brandeis students with us at the cafe, and I think it's always interesting for them to hear stories like that because they're at a point in their lives where they're trying to find their path. And I always say, you know, when you tell the story backwards, it all fits together. But when you're going forwards, you're just figuring it out one piece at a time. Oh, for sure. For sure. And you take different paths, but it, it, it's kind of not a wrong path sometimes. I, I guess you can make bad mistakes, but I, I could have like gone to Germany and studied uh, and played jazz with no return ticket, but I chose not to do that. Mm -hmm. I, I could have went to Puerto Rico and collected unemployment, but my family would not support me <laughs> anyway if I did that. So I made different choices, went to grad school instead, and uh, other things. Yeah. Sure people have turning points in their lives that change things. So yeah, Absolutely. here we are. And we're trying to put it all together for you today. So we're going to be touching upon some um, some uh, West African tradition and some um, instruments from there, from the Caribbean, from Brazil. And uh, mind you, it's so much, but I'm trying to make it flow. It's not telling a story, but it is moving from one thing to another in a way that you can you know, interact with me. So if you can hear my voice and you can agree, say, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, thank you. Yeah. I just kind of went through and muted people because we were getting a little background noise, but I'm glad that you unmuted yourself to say yeah, yeah. Thank <laughs> well, you. Well, I watch the mouths, you know, even if, you know, they can't hear me. I can't hear you. I can see you. So, yeah. And I uh, thought we'd start today with the talking drum. And uh, I would just show you the talking drum. I'm going to move to the back part of the room right there behind the drums but before i go there i want to show you the drum this is the drum right here and if you can see through the strings it's shaped like an hourglass and it's kind of big in relation to my size see sometimes they're so small they can fit under your armpit but this is one from uh, ghana and nigeria as opposed to the small ones from senegal and mali and this one you play under here and all of them have a thin middle part so you squeeze it and it makes the pitch higher let go it gets lower so that's the trick of it but with the small ones you can put your hand on it too while you're playing so you get double the amount of sounds and you can get uh, real high voicings, but even just being able to do this, masters can do wonders with this drum. So I thought I'd just use it to play uh, a little song from um, Baba Tunde Olatunji. Anybody heard of him? Raise your hands. He's a Nigerian, um, well, he came here as a med student, but decided to dedicate his life to drumming because he saw how little people knew about Africa. This is like 1952. So he started the whole community drumming movement and recorded the first two African albums uh, in this country called Drums of Passion 1 and 2. So if you ever want to check it out, Baba Tunde Ola Tunji. So here we go.
known as the Doon Doon sometimes. So yeah. So yeah, the talking drum is one of the many drums we're looking at. And I'm going to move over to the big table and start talking about the family of percussion. Because drums is one of four members of the family. Yeah, yeah? And you can say, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, the member of the family that you start off with is the shaker. The shakers come in many forms, and uh, the most popular is the maraca, like this. And often it's two of them, so when you see a Latin band, they have two maracas. And in Brazil, they have these ones, shaped like these tubes. And I call this like the Starship Enterprise shaker. You hold it sideways like that. And when you're at home and you're making your own shakers, you can make them out of medicine bottle, vitamin bottle, an ice cream container, and put beans in it. And you have a good shaker there too. And if you feel like you can hit it on stuff. So the shakers are cool, and I'm gonna bring up another shake a little bit later. But the shakers are good because you can use the shakers all the time. And you shake them steadily even if the beat stops. Like for instance, here I go. Shaker doesn't stop, right? Change the beat. And change the beat again. So you see how the shaker keeps things moving. It's like a carpet of energy underneath that supports the rhythm. Then, do, 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 we have the scrapers. Now, I asked you if you could bring a, uh, I, uh, did I bring a scraper? Oh, we did talk about the scrapers. But just recently, Beth said, well, did you bring something to scrape with? Like a cheese grater. Well, that's good. And this is a Harry Belafonte style scraper. You've heard of him. Big bamboo, right? Yeah. And listen to this type of scraping sound I'm making. Oh, papa. Slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick. Sometimes a quick, quick can just be a tap like that. And in Brazil, they have many scrapers, but this is my favorite. This is called the Heco Heco. It's spelled R-E-C-O, R-E-C-O. And as you can see, it's got this look about it. It used to be uh, a drain pipe from a house. And this spring probably came from a screen door, something like that. And this horn, I think that's decorative. <laughs> so I'm going to put my thumb on the spring and release it to change the sound. So the heckle heckle is cool and uh, just a little tip about Brazilian Portuguese it's spelled R-E-C-O but it sounds like a H, heku heku, because the first R in uh, Portuguese sounds like a H. And um, what's an example? Ricardo. It would be Hikadu. Hikadu. Yeah. So the, the, the musician Barry White, it was funny because the way they would pronounce his name would be Bahi Haichi. Bahi Haichi, just paying attention to the way they pronounce their letters as opposed to us. Barry White becomes Bahi Haichi. 
a little, little funny thing there. So the heckle heckle, always the name remind me of the, the two crows in the cartoons, heckle and jekyll. Then we have the bells. Well, just to talk about the bells, I have a bell tree right here. I'll turn it around so you can see it. Now the bells, they have the cow bell. And we have the Brazilian bell. And do I have the African bell down here? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Ugh. Now, I think the Brazilian bell was shaped after the African bell because here is the most popular African bell. They have different shapes. Some shaped like canoes. And this one has got a double bell, just like the Brazilian. But you can see this is a different shape. They're both made of iron. And this one, because of the size, I can put it against my body and get a wah-wah sound like this. I'm going to take a chance here. I think you can hear it, right? So I'll play rhythm with it. So that wah-wah is kind of cool. And that rhythm I play goes with a dance called uh, Gahun, which is a, a kind of very fun social dance in Ghana. So you see things didn't just come out of the air. A lot of times the predecessor exists. And then in many cases, they made things that were um, from the memory of what they had before, whether it's the Africans or anybody who's displaced and in a place where they can't get their normal things, but they want to keep their culture alive. Cornell, can I um, just um, interrupt yep. for one second? We hear you great. I just wanted to remind people that if you want to be able to see Cornell's image big on your screen so that you can get a better look at all of the instruments that he's showing, you can choose the... Um, speaker view so i know you're on different devices but most of you have that view option in zoom it's usually in the upper right corner and if you're on gallery view you see everybody in little boxes but if you choose speaker view then you would see cornell in a big box so i just wanted to remind you that if you're having trouble seeing him and the things he's showing you could change to speaker view and I want to echo what you said because I'm watching Cornell on the, just him, just you. And wherever you are, is that space your home, Cornell? Because it's just amazing where you are. It's my home. Yeah, it's my basement studio. It's just so uh, inspiring. Oh, thank you. I really wanted to, you know, have something people would enjoy looking at for an hour. It's, it's <laughs> very inspiring. Thank you. <laughs> Wow, that's great. It's working. It's working. <laughs> yeah, so moving to the next thing, we talked about the bells and African bell. And I wanted to start playing again. Yeah. And but I want to start with the shaker and play a, a Native American rhythm where you could play the shaker. And um, uh, and I'll play the basic rhythm. And I'm going to use one of my African drums because it has skin on it. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you probably cannot. But I'm just going to pick it up for a minute because it's light enough. You can see it's made from wood. And it has a skin with the hair still on it. Because on the, the hand drums that you play with hands, they often scale the hair off. But if you're playing it with sticks a lot of times, they leave the hair on it. Don't ask me why. <clears throat> Maybe it's an economy move, less energy to spend. You know, all this takes some work. But this drum has got goat skin head on it. And a lot of the African drums do. And as opposed to the conga drums, which we'll get to over here, they have um, cow skin. Now the goat skin is thinner, but dynamic. And I, I know you can hear this. And I'm going to play this rhythm and see if you can work with me on it. I'm going to use the maracas, one maraca, 
it's interesting. One maraca is used with the Native Americans, one per person. And it's used with the Brazilians in this rhythm called bomba, which is uh, one of the two national rhythms and dances of, of Puerto Rico. Did I say Brazil? I meant Puerto Rico. So I'm going to start with this. You can shake along with me. So I'm getting this heavy downbeat. And you can do that shaking your shaker high and low. A song. You can repeat with me. Then I go up. My part now. Yes, my drum is holy. Holy is the way. River, mountain, valley, echoing the day. Great spirit circles all around me. Everybody, hey ya! Hey ya ya ya, hey ya ya. Hey ya ya ya, hey ya ya. Hey ya ya ya, hey ya ya. One more chorus by me. Yes, my drum is holy, holy is the way. Work and life together, echoing the day. Great spirit circle all around me. Hey ya, 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 hey ya. So it's always good to honor the Native American people on whose land we stand. So I hope you got a little bit of opportunity there to shake it up as we think about that for a moment and move to the, the next part of our program, which would be to pay homage to one of the um, West African Yoruba, which is a tribe from Nigeria, whose culture has come over to the United States and to Cuba and to Puerto Rico and to Brazil and other places, but those are the main popular ones, in a big way. The Yoruba culture has these different names. One is Santeria, in uh, the religion, in Santeria in Cuba, and Brazil is called Candomblé. But because there were many African nations there, it's mixed in with some other things sometimes. I think more in Brazil than in Cuba. So Elegua is the opener of doors. And you know, these religions were banned because they were thought to be uh, empowering and pagan and uh, anti-Catholic, uh, because a lot of the countries were Catholic. So people want to keep their culture and they merged the African saint images with uh, the, the African, with the Catholic saint that was closest to it. So uh, Saint Lazarus might be one of the African saints. Uh, Jesus, that image, they use his statue for Obatala. Uh, Virgin Mary, they use Yemayat. They use her statue for Yemayat, and so forth. So they uh, continue the practice. And uh, I'm not a member of the religion, but a lot of people here in uh, this country, throughout many states, still practice it. Uh, people of African descent, uh, African Americans and Latin Americans or Afro-Latino, you will find them um, practicing their religion as well as being Catholics. And that's, you know, something to think about. Anyway, El Egua has music which is um, going like this. So 
so I would encourage you with your hands to play two beats with me like this. And you can change the place where you're hitting those two beats on a different part of your leg, one leg, the other leg, your chest, your leg, your table in the middle, the table on the edge. with me here we go ready right left if you're righty or if you're left-handed left right left right so let's try it slowly okay okay so then we're going to go into it quickly now Say 
making the effort yeah wonderful well congratulations and that was a little bit of intro to playing on the cowskin congas now these drums are known as conga drums as opposed to bongos bongos are the little ones and the congas the name comes from you may guess the congo because the congolese people were very predominant, not as dominant as the Yorba, but predominant in the cultural retentions of the Africans who were enslaved in the West. So we have a lot of Congolese culture in um, Brazil and the Americas. Like in, in America, I would say in North America, we have it in the uh, art made from found objects. Like if you ever been to the House of Blues, anybody been to the House of Blues? Uh, well, and places in New Orleans as well, you find people have decorated their chairs in the House of Blues in the green room. Probably don't get a chance to go there, but they that's where the performers um, change and hang out and get ready to go on stage. And in the House of Blues, out in the audience area, they have art made of found objects. So they may, and they may decorate uh, a chair or the frame of a picture and uh, different, like a walking stick or a banister with art. And it's, it's really unusual and beautiful. So that's one thing. And another is um, our language, the way we say, uh-huh, sure, okie doke, yup. Those connect to Africa, connect to the Congolese, Kikongo language. And I didn't just make this up, there's books about it. So we have cultural retentions here that we don't really know. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe yeah, yeah. You're not sure yet. So I want to also move on to um, this rhythm known as clave. Now clave, now I, I wasn't absolutely properly prepared, but clave is two fat sticks. They're usually only about this long about six inches long, and you play them across from each other, and you clack them like that. So clave is the instrument, and what they did to replicate it in popular bands, they have this thing, which I didn't point to when I showed you my drum, my, 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 my bell tree. This is uh, used as a clave. It's a piece of plastic, but it sounds like wood. Right? And that is rhythm I just played is called clave as well. And again, it sounds like pop, 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 pop. Okay? And clave is everywhere. And it's particularly known by that name in Latin America because it's the name comes from a, a kind of transformation of the word llave, which is key. And that in Spanish, and that's uh, the key to keeping everything together. You can play clave on anything. You can always recognize that, okay? And people used to use the word in the old days because they don't use these terms anymore. Shave and a haircut, two bits. <laughs> Remember that? But you hear it. At, in a lot of blues songs and even rock and roll. So let's try clapping that together. I'm going to play it on my bell. Okay, let's see if you can play it on your bells. You got your bell out? I'm going to pull out mine. I don't want to cheat. I got a piece of a glass here. And I've got my, my uh, butter knife. 
You may have a mug, because, you know, if you don't get a thin glass, you might break it. So playing on something sideways is good. Tip of the knife will give you the high sound. Flip it around, the butt of the knife. A little lower sound. You don't even have to hit it very hard. But the idea is to get the beat. And people stick out their finger along the edge sometimes to give themselves more control. See my finger there. Yeah, so that's interesting. Well, I think we should put it into action. Yeah. So I'm going to play a rhythm, and I'm going to get a little accompaniment with uh, my, my uh, soundtrack here. And play a rhythm known as Pan Logo. Okay, so we'll just use that to try and play clave on the bell. Okay, I'm going to take you through some stages. And let me see. I think I'll try the African drum for this one. Choo 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 choo. Do 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 do. All right, so here's the rhythm, and you will hear where the clave fits in, but I'll help you out with it. Conga. for the dance tempo because this music is made for dancing. The pan logo dance, it moves like that. And then you hear a single for change. And then you change what you're doing. You get down lower or you go higher or you go forward or you go backwards and then single for change again. You turn sideways and maybe you do something like this with your hands and your feet are doing the same thing. And then you have to single for change again, and then you spin around and clap underneath your leg and bring your hands back three times, and so forth. It keeps going on. Every time you get the signal for change, you change your dance step. So let's just try now mm, the song that goes with it. All right. So we got the clap. And I'm keeping a steady beat here. And I'm going to give you the chant, okay? I sing, Jammy, Jammy, oh, Jammy, Jammy, see na mo mo. And the chant is not singing, but chanting, Pogolo da, lo da, Pogolo da. So let's try that. Ready? Ready? Two, three, and. Pogolo da, lo da, Pogolo da. Again, Pogolo da, lo da, Pogolo da. One more time, Pogolo da, lo da, Pogolo da. Now, just half of it, Pogolo da, lo da. Okay, ready? One, two, three, four. Jammy, jammy, oh jammy, jammy, e i they go, oh, oh, da, oh, da, 
thing bounces. Okay. So let's go to the third part, which is I sing free man jolly. Free man is a happy man. Free man jolly. And your answer would be oh I -A. Okay? So I go free man jolly. Oh I -A. 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 After four times Pogolo da, lo da, together at the end. Okay? So that is the introduction to the dance. After that, the lead drummer takes over and starts signaling those changes for the dancers. So we're just doing the intro, but you're doing great. All right? So again, with the clave. Jammy, jammy, oh, jammy, jammy, si, na, mo, mo, pogolo, da, lo, da. All those times in Jolly Jammy, oh Jammy, Jammy, Ia de go, Pogolo da, Loda, Pogolo da, Freeman Jolly, oh I, Freeman Jolly, oh I, Freeman Jolly, oh I, one more time, Freeman Jolly, oh I, everybody together, and Pogolo da, Loda, Pogolo da, okay. Good. So after that happens, as it ta tailing onto the end of it, the drummer signals for change, and they start soloing, and the dancers start moving. Boom. Okay. So let's start with the beginning, and I'll go through the changes and see if you can clap the clave and sing and chant together without stopping the clave. Okay. Pogolo da, lo da, pogolo da, pogolo da, lo da, pogolo da. See that goes right with the ch with the chant, right? Pogolo da, lo da, and then free man jolly, oh I, free man jolly, oh I, free man jolly, oh ah, that's your challenge, free man jolly, oh I. After four times, and I go pogolo da. Loda, Pogolo da. Okay, good. Are we ready? Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, All right. yeah. Good, good, good. We're getting there. We're opening it up. The energy. All right. We're gonna start. One, two, get your clave. Thanks for one more time. And hands for moving on. Oh, the one more time as I've outvoted the move oners. So we'll do it quickly. Okay. Ready to show me what you know. Jamie, Jamie, oh, Jamie, Jamie. Oh, I hate. 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 Oh,
following that time. Uh, lost my hat. I think everybody sounded good, especially because uh -huh. I could only hear you, Cornell. But I was imagining everybody sounding really good together. Well, you know, it's nothing like repetition to That's get right. sounding good. I just want to say hi to Carl and Arnetta who just joined us. Good to have you here. All right. So now we're moving on to something Afro-Brazilian. And this is a martial art dance and sport known as capoeira. Now capoeira is a major contributor to break dancing. In the 70s, two masters from Brazil came over to New York City and the street dancers, the poppers and the lockers doing all that stuff, the freezing, and they liked what the break, the capoeira people were doing cause it took it to another level. They were doing upside down freezes. They were doing um, sweeps with the leg. They were doing flips, headstands. So that's when the break dancers started getting those big pieces of cardboard, putting them down so they could do the head spins and the spins on their back and everything. Capoeira influenced that. And Capoeira's music included the musical bow, the Berrien Bow. Now, just a little history of capoeira very briefly. It didn't come from one particular group. It was, it was attributed to the Angolans because a lot of the Portuguese in Brazil thought the Africans mostly all came from Angola. So the first capoeira form was named by the Portuguese capoeira Angola. Not necessarily the case, but people argue that. And then capoeira is... Uh, a thing that was developed by in the city, not in the countryside. And you might think it was in the countryside because a lot of the enslaved Africans escaped slavery and went to the country to live as free people. And uh, they did call those places different names. The Maroons in Jamaica, where I'm from, and the Camarones, Cimarones in Cuba, and different names in Haiti and in Brazil there was a place called Palomares, which was a huge escaped African, former African slave settlement. And, but you would think they would develop it out there, but it really developed in the cities. And like Rumba in Cuba, it was a combination of different uh, African people coming together to create it in Cuba. And especially places where the ships came in, because that was the center of transportation. You know, there were no trains, there were no planes. So that's where different nations, different people, different nationalities, you know, French, British, Portuguese, Spanish, Africans from Angola, Nigeria, Senegal, Ghana, Mali, were all together there, you know, working or as free people. So Capoeira developed there. And it was deemed dangerous because it united the Africans. So it was banned, went underground, and then emerged again and um, was, uh, had rules now and uniforms and stuff. And uh, it was changed the name to Capoeira Regional. Of course, because of the H factor for the R's, it's called Hijonal. And uh, there you see people playing Capoeira with white uniforms on, that's the Hijonal style. But if you see them with street clothes, that's the older Angolan style, which is a little more slow still difficult and acrobatic but it wasn't so speedy and flashy and i love them both they're different though but what's common to them all is the musical bow the bedding bow if you could say with me bed in bow bed in bow so it sounds like the bed you might sleep in but it's really a b-e-r and this gourd comes off and it grows in the ground like a pumpkin this wire is a development after the advent of hmm, technology. I don't know if it was the car. That's what I hear, though. It came from the wire of the steel belted tire. This is not an animal gut. This is a wire. They still use that kind of wire today, but they also use piano wire. I don't know which key it is. But this is uh, the instrument that di dictates the speed of the game. And uh, the, the rhythm, rhythms have different names, and they tell you what's going on. Like if there's a master present, if it's a game for beginners, or if the police are coming, if we should turn into a samba, 
they have all these different rhythms and uh, the songs that go with it. So <clears throat> the instrument you play would be the, the pandero, which is a frame drum. I uh, wish I had it here. I don't. But imagine a tambourine like in church and it has a skin on it. You're playing boom, chica, boom, boom, ba. That is it. And then they have the Brazilian bell, which is right here. Okay. And they have people clapping and singing. And that, oh, and they have the scraper. This one here. And you're not playing the slow quick. You're doing... They do this all the time, repeat it. So you can imagine the beat is going goom, go, goom, ba, goom, go, goom, ba. And it's really a transporting type of pulse. And you can play it like you were doing before, playing boom. you have your bell you can play boom 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 ding boom 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 ding or and you can get the two sounds from your from your cup or your mug by hitting the top so the top is higher the thinner the higher so you can play ding 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 ba bing 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 ba bing 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 ba bing 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 ba or ding yeah, yeah. Okay, good. I like the energy. I like the energy. What if you just yeah, cut your yeah. shaker? <laughs> you can play it slowly. So I'm gonna play the bit and bow. How much time have I got left? Um, it's um almost twenty past. So I guess ten minutes in total. Okay, we're going to get going here. <laughs> I don't want to rush you through anything. Oh, oh no. You know, we're flexible. It doesn't have to be on the dot. Oh, good. We'll go, go with the groove. So I'm going to put in my other shaker. This is the other shaker I told you about, a little basket. It's called a kashishi. And it's like a... Um, a uh, uh, project you might do in, in, in arts and crafts. You weave the thin strands of bamboo together to form the basket, and at the bottom you have a solid piece, which is a, actually the same material the gourd is made from, like a pumpkin type of piece, cut into a small thing. And then you have your thin stick, and some kind of stone or coin that's thick. And you push this against a wire, to change the sound to make the wire sound higher pitched. Sorry. So on, off, on, off. the part of it. All right, are we ready for capoeira? You can play doom, do doom, ba, if you like, and all the other things I showed you. I'm going to put on the, the music. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pick a panda. Here we go. You can hear the shaker, right? The scraper.
calming down now. I'm gonna sing. Your answer would be Paranae, Paranae, Parana, okay? Paranae, Paranae, Parana. Your turn. Paranae, Paranae. My turn. Parana, Paranae, Parana. Dona Maria, como vai você? Parana. Your turn. Paranae, Paranae, Parana. Solo. Coração matador Parana 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 Quando vem da Bahia contra a Síria Coração matador Parana 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 Dona Maria como vai você Parana Semana, a semana que vem, Parana, 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 Parana. Sou braço de maré, Parana, me sem fim, Parana, 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 Parana. Episódio, fala no cordão de ouro. Down the old Then the Bahia De San Salvador Jogar capoeira E mostrar o meu valor Paraná 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 Eu nasci na Bahia, capital de Salvador, e tudo que eu sei, me mestre me ensinou, e tudo que eu tenho, é o Deus que me deu, viva meu Deus, e é, viva meu Deus, camarada, viva capoeira. Yeah, this is your part. Viva Capoeira, Paraná. Viva Bahia. Yeah, Viva Bahia, Paraná. Viva Salvador. Yeah, Viva Salvador, Camara. Viva meu mestre. Yeah, Viva meu mestre, Paraná. Viva Capoeira. Yeah, Viva Capoeira, Camara. Galo canto. Galo canto, camara, cocoroco, e cocoroco, camara, bum bum. Capoeira music for you. And it inspires people. People that are fat, skinny, you think they can't play, they get inspired by this music and they start doing incredible things with their bodies. So capoeira is all of that. So it's second in popularity in Brazil only to one other sport. And you can guess what that is. Yep. Futebol. Soccer. Yeah. What is it? That's, they call it football. football. It's soccer. Soccer. And then after that, it's capoeira. Yeah, so it's something that came from uh, the Africans and has become like major popular in Brazil with everybody. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. So now we have our theme song before we go into the end. Our uh, theme song is based on a popular song, which you may know. I think George Benson made it popular. And I have my scraper. You have a scraper? Now, my, my secret, I found out, is you can get satisfaction from scraping just by using your butter knife on anything and do the secret scrape, which is slow, quick, quick. Okay, so do it on tabletop. Slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick. Okay? If you have a scraper thingy, like, uh, where's that thing? Oh, uh, yeah, it's not close to me, but, you know, the cheese grater, you can... Let's do that. Slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick. And I'm going to play the theme song music. Where is it here? Ba -da -ba 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 -da. If you're ready, say, yeah, yeah, raise your hands. Let me see some fingers shaking like they applause in uh, yeah, yeah. the deaf community. All right, good. Here we go. Can you hear me? I'm going to use my heckle heckle. Here we go. They say the lights on. Always bright in Boston, in Boston. They say there's always magic in the air. Where? In Boston, Massachusetts, baby. But when I'm walking down the street, and I've got all my friends with me, maybe my meds, and I feel so nice, and I'm right here. In Boston, you can report, re replace it with any place you like. Because I feel so nice, and I'm right here. I'm gonna say, in Boston, boom, 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 boom. They say the people treat you nice in Boston. Yeah, through now. They always meet you with the wink and the smile. Boston, boom, boom, boom. But can I say what's on my mind? You know I know you try to shine. And when you're shining, I know you feel brand new in Boston. In Boston. You say one day you go away from Boston. Boston. You pack up all of your things, sell your condo, and go out, sell my drum in Boston. Boom, boom, boom. But that view is incomplete. Boom, boom, boom. You know, you got to learn some beats. Boom, boom, boom. Cause the drumming we do is sweet in Boston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Boston. Now here's the chant. All the drumming we do is sweet. Boom, boom, boom. Nobody can resist the beat. All the music we play is sweet. Boom, boom, boom. Nobody can resist the beat. All the drumming we do is sweet. Nobody can resist the beat. All the music we play. Nobody can resist the beat bah. in Boston. In Boston. In Boston. In Boston. In Boston. In Boston. All right. So, did you get your scraper on that time? That was great. Okay. Good. I was just using the butter knife and a ballpoint pen, but you're quick, quick, slow. That was good advice. It sounded yeah. okay. <laughs> That's all you need. That's all you need. Just join in. Like, 
places where they start using the salt shaker and the pepper shaker and the cup and the teaspoon and they just play along with the house the, the little ensemble the house band so it's, it's great to have a chance to uh, make music together with others yeah i wonder if any, everybody wants to just hold up whatever you were using if you were using something to make music Hold up what, what you're using. I see all kinds of things, some actual instruments there, a drum, a shaker, a ballpoint pen, and a cardboard box. Nah. And is that a piece of toast, Cece? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. It's a slice of wood. Oh, OK. <laughs> Looks like a piece of toast. <laughs> oh, good. That yeah. toast would have those crumbs everywhere. <laughs> That's great. Um, Cornell, you've shown us a lot of stuff and you've taught us a lot of stuff. And I wonder if anybody has any questions or comments for Cornell. Well, I would just like to say that in addition to the fabulous music and the, and the setting in your home, I find it so inspiring, meaningful, um, giving me chills when you talk about all the history and where things come from. And, um, you know, so much has been lost and so much has been gained. And I think your devotion and dedication to bringing this to all of us and to so many others, uh, you know, it, it just, it, it really matters. So I want to thank you. Yeah, uh, Ashay. I appreciate it very much. I say. I'll keep on doing it because it's fun. Mm. Yeah. And I've tried to put in the little facts and figures here and there. Yeah. Keep people like uh, their other side of their brain working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, what this does is it makes you kind of forget about, you know, your worries. You know, you stop reminiscing and ruminating on the past. You don't worry about the future. You're just in the moment playing the music. And if it was a live experience, it would be even more, more of that sensation. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the, the strength of it right there. Absolutely. And I have had the good fortune of being at the House of Blues in New Orleans. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So, so you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Even Massachusetts, they have a house of blues. They, yeah, they, I've been there yeah. too. But New Orleans is special. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. But if you can't get there, go to your local. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think well. the other piece of it is, um, you know, what you're saying, Margie, is the importance of roots and heritage and knowing the threads. And when we chatted the other day, Cornell, you mentioned that you're playing at a Juneteenth celebration this weekend. Uh, yeah, I'm doing one in Malden. It's going to be on Juneteenth. I'll be doing a drum uh, presentation and then a drum circle for people to join in. I'll bring drums for everybody. That's at Lincoln Park in Malden around uh, 11. I'll do this presentation <clears throat> and uh, it'll go on for about three, four hours. Uh, there'll be a, a band there. I knew at least one band called Lechuca Fresca. Some friends of mine who play like uh, Latin jazz music. And uh, let's see, I'm doing one on the 19th, one on the 18th, but it's it's more of a private group type of thing. It's a community. It's not really private, but it's a community. I think it's in Newton or somewhere. It's on my website. All this stuff is on my website. And my website is afrolatin.net. It's on the home page. I'm going to put that in the chat here. So if you want to see Cornell play and join a drum, drum circle, I think you're going to have beautiful weather this weekend. Mm. Yeah. And, um, you know, it just it's really speaks to the importance of heritage and roots and passing on the stories. And, uh, you know, it's something we talk about here a lot in our group. People come from all different backgrounds and it's always good to share about those stories and those threads and they ultimately all come together in the human family and there's also the specificity of different cultures different experiences that's really good to know and talk about does anybody else have 
anything they want to ask Cornell or or mention to him before we transition to the last part of our cafe today? Well, I just want to say that um, as a JF and CS staff member, we are the it's the first year that we're commemor commemorating Juneteenth, and we actually have it as a holiday. So. Um, I, I feel like that's really important and uh, took, took a while, a few years, but this year, first year. So yeah. now Wait, I believe it's a holiday in six states. Mm -hmm. Six states. Growing. Yes. Wow. But not, not at every workplace. So we at JFNCS uh, have the day off. So we will okay. be celebrating in different ways. Now, so then you say the day off, you mean Monday, the 20th? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. And if anybody's not familiar with Juneteenth, it's a good thing to look up and read the history of it. But it commemorates when the last kind of community of people who were held in bondage during the time of slavery learned that the Emancipation Proclamation had been signed. So that was in Galveston, Texas. In those days, news traveled slowly. So it took two years for everyone to learn that freedom had come. And so it's a commemoration and celebration of that finally reaching um, everybody in the States. It was 1865. That's, yeah, that sounds right. Does anybody yeah. know? Two years after Lincoln declared yeah. independence, yeah. I mean, emancipation. 1867. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's really uh, something. I'll be in Harvard Square tonight with um, a group called Black Coral, and they're going to be at the Hooper something house celebrating the participation of African, in African slaves, I think, in uh, the building up of the Harvard Square area. Yeah, that's called something celebration of Tory Row. That's on my website, though. Great. Thank you, Cornell. And that's, that's another, um, it's wonderful when that history is being identified and commemorated. Stories that had been lost or sub submerged, suppressed, um, that are finding their way into the light. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for sharing with us. Feel free to hang around. We're going to have our conversation time for the next 20 minutes, but we understand if you need to sign off and prepare for everything that you're you've got on your docket yeah i'm gonna be getting ready for tonight okay well right. we thank you so much for being with us my pleasure and yeah, thank you guys we'll have you back again yes i enjoyed working with you thank you all right take care